you should be inspired by money. I'm, I, of as course. Just, I'm inspired <laughs> by people. I also love money a lot. Mm-hmm. And I do want to be rich and opulent. And uh, I also want to meet those ones who are around me to be able yeah. to, to be wealthy. And even those children that we are teaching, we want to, to encourage them to be entrepreneurs so that they can be able to employ their, their cousins, mm-hmm. their family, their countrymen. You probably own a smartphone. Definitely, you have apps on that phone. Or you are browsing on a website and you love the design. Let me tell you, they don't just magically appear. A mind in action somewhere? Put that in action and brought it to manifestation. That's why we thought today's guest would be the perfect fit to tell us about coding, robots, anything and everything technology. I'll be joined by Mr. Ndaudika Mulundileni, the co-founder and the CEO of Minds in Action. I'm your host, Sitch, and this is Africa Speaks. Today we are talking all things robotics, digital technology, but let me not talk about it because I've got someone with me. I am joined by the co-founder and the CEO of Minds in Action. His name is Mr. Ndaudika Mulundileni. And he'll tell us more what it means when you have your mind in action. Hi, Mr. Ndaudika. Hello. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm good. Thank you. And welcome to Africa Speaks. Okay. Let's start. Who is Ndaudika? Okay, so um, I'm Ndaudika Mulundileni. Mm-hmm. I... I'm from Ungotiba. I grew up in Ungotiba. That's where I attended in my high school. Uh, that's where I spent most of my time mm-hmm. as a child. So after high school, I studied uh, at the University of Cape Town, where I studied mechatronics engineering. Yes. And um, after completing university, um, I, I did uh, a, a work, mm-hmm. did several jobs. But then uh, me and my friend, who we have been able to do science fair projects when we were in high school, mm-hmm. we decided to come together and form a company. Uh, that is after uh, realizing that there was a gap in terms of uh, skills, uh, especially pentecostalary skills, mm-hmm. when it comes to uh, manufacturing, when it comes to actually producing that what we consume in Namibia. So it, this is a common thing, especially in African countries, whereby we import most of our technologies yeah. uh, that we consume here, like uh, at our cell phones, at our computers, machineries that we use in manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Mostly are imported. Uh, yeah. imported. And then uh, it's uh, a little bit sad because Africa has so many bright minds that just yeah. need to be put in action. Exactly, like you say, minds in action. So when was Mind in Action established? Um, I know you touched a little bit on um, why it was established. So just tell us when was it established? And of course, just to expand more now on the inspiration behind it. Okay, so uh, Mind in Action was established in 2018. Uh, so uh, that is when we decided that we should be able to expose learners, especially primary school mm-hmm. and uh, secondary school learners to uh, new skills in technology. So we started looking at science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, not as separate subjects like uh, you see in yeah. school, mm. they are learning about mathematics, they are learning about science and arts, but then these subjects are isolated. Mm-hmm. There is no way of actually seeing how does math and science concepts yeah. apply to technology and engineering to be able to come up with something. Mm-hmm. So that is the exposure that uh, we were uh, trying to get across in 2018. Mm-hmm. So we did campaigns across uh, schools in, mm-hmm. in Namibia. We went to different regions like uh, Erongo region, Taras region, and then uh, also Omaheke. So we were also at the Hangwena region. So um, after this exposure uh, mm-hmm. in 2018, we, thought we saw a great interest yep. among the learners. Learners were actually uh, curious about technology. They were willing to learn new skills about coding, about robotics, about 3D printing. Mm-hmm. They, they wanted to learn about electronics, how things work, how to make things. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And then um, in 2019, yeah. um, the, then that's when we decided to convert the whole model to a for-profit business. And then um, in 2020, uh, the conditions of the world uh, were affected yeah. by the COVID pandemic. 
so we didn't do much in that year. Mm. And then in 2021, we started to, things started to open up a little bit. And uh, we started to be getting on our feet as a business. Mm -hmm. uh, and only in 2022, we were able to really scale. Our revenue started to grow. And then we were also able to assemble a team that okay. could be able to carry out our activities. Mm -hmm. And so that you can be able to move the vision of the of the mission of the company forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is uh, in aspirations to be able to realize our vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So let me ask you about Minds in Action. Why the name Minds in Action? Okay. So we, we first, we were just looking at, uh, at ourselves. Yeah. Uh, as uh, I'm saying, the co-founders, Andres and I, mm -hmm. we were like, um, we, we needed to be able to take our science fair experience from high school into a much more uh, professional business. Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what should we do? We should put our minds in action. Mm -hmm. So that, the name came by then. And then it caught on very well because even when we started getting new team members to join our team, mm -hmm. the minds just became many. Oh, then that's why it's minds in action. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the STEAM product mm -hmm. or program. What does STEAM stand for and who does it cater to? Okay, so uh, STEAM is uh, science, uh, technology, engineering, yeah, and then there's uh, arts. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, previously known as STEM. Okay. Yeah, but then nowadays in arts, mm -hmm. so we refer to it as uh, STEAM. STEAM. And then the T is for technology. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Um, and the M? It's mathematics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. that is mathematics. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, 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 that, uh, in that case, uh, STEAM um, I, I, in itself, mm -hmm. if you look at technology, it, you need uh, all the other concepts of all the other subjects yeah. to be able to uh, understand technology, to make technology, use technology. That's why um, these clusters mm -hmm. of modules that uh, we are having in STEAM are covering uh, different skills. And then we use a hands-on learning model. So instead of having a teacher stand in front and uh, teach the children, they actually learn by doing. Mm. That's what we are calling the hands-on approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so the STEAM program, um, who is qualified to be part of the STEAM program, if I should ask that? Okay, so the way that we um, structured our modules mm. is in the way that... Um, primary school learners and secondary school learners who have no prior knowledge to coding, to robotics, to electronics, can be able to use the first module mm -hmm. as kind of a beginner's module that brings them up to date. They learn about motors, they learn about sensors, they learn about how to be able to get input from an environment and make uh, take a certain action using the motor or an actuator that they would, they would like. So, um, we also have uh, other modules that uh, are tailored for university students. Um, then those ones have different requirements. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, but then all the requirements are on the, on on the, the website. website. Okay, I'm uh, talking about the website. Yeah. Maybe this information. The next question: the information can be found on the website mm. because you mentioned that you cater to ha uh, secondary school and primary school. Mm. So, how much are the classes, or do you offer them for free? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, interesting mm -hmm. because the main aim for this uh, company is to make STEAM education accessible, mm. but not only accessible to learners who can be able to afford to pay, mm. but also those ones from marginalized communities or from uh, further areas uh, geographically that may be not be accessible. So what we do, uh, especially in Windup, we charge um, 1,500. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that is a, a fee we charge the parents okay. to register their uh, children. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is for the first module, for example. Mm -hmm. And it takes eight weeks to okay. complete that module for that price. So it's almost two months. Mm -hmm. yes. And then uh, the, what we do now to meet those children from marginalized communities halfway mm -hmm. is that um, we apply for funding. Okay. Yes, we will apply for funding like from the Namibian Scientific Society or from the Rotary Club in the National mm. or from other uh, uh, mm. corporates yeah. with uh, uh, social responsibility and they feel like uh, STEAM education is mm -hmm. one of their focus areas. 
So they are willing to pay for a group of learners mm -hmm. in a certain community and then would travel down to that community and be able to expose those learners. Mm -hmm. So last year we had a project um, that we conducted with um, the Namibian Scientific Society and the uh, Action Model. It's an American company that sponsored 40 girls okay. in the Bunene region wow. to be exposed to um, uh, three modules which was robotics, coding, and 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So these learners were able to actually learn the robotic skills. These are children like who have never worked with a computer yeah. before. So it was really interesting and mm -hmm. um, exciting for them because um, not only they were learning about the computer itself, how to navigate yeah. the mouse, and they were actually coding. And they are not only coding a computer program, they are actually writing a computer program that controls a certain hardware mm -hmm. so that can be able to say it's a robot that can be able to pick up an item from one location to another and that that is uh, that was particularly interesting to those learners in that region mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they could be able to come up with something that they would imagine in, yeah. the, in the head it's like a, an idea and then they can be able to uh, design this idea into the computer aided design software so it comes from an idea, mm -hmm. goes into the software, and then they print it out oh. from the 3D printing. Okay, quite interesting. Yeah. And how often do you give your the, the classes? So here, um, each learner uh, attends once in a week. Okay. Yeah, so attendance is just, um, for example, if you choose to attend on a Friday mm -hmm. from 2 o'clock to 4.30, and then you do that for the next eight Fridays. Oh, okay. It, that is to complete the first module. Mm -hmm. After completing that first module, you move on to the second module that is a little bit advanced. So, for example, electronics with a Raspberry Pi or Arduino, mm -hmm. uh, where you can be able to uh, kind of have a feel for real electronics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Earlier on, you mentioned that under the Minds in Action umbrella, you have four profits uh, projects, if I should call them that, for lack of a better word. So, walk me through the different type of services that you offer here in mind minds of in minds in action okay so the first one is uh, definitely the steam training um and then the second one is engineering services mm -hmm. because we we have a, a a group of engineers who train these children so when we are not training the children mm -hmm. we are working on solutions of different clients yeah. that's uh, what we do in the engineering department they develop projects like home automations, like uh, smart uh, agricultural solutions, uh, and uh, um, they also make machines. Mm -hmm. the, a client who is probably manufacturing something locally and they want to kind of scale their production, they can come to us and say, okay, I have this uh, need mm -hmm. to be able to uh, maximize my production. What kind of uh, solution can you give me? So these guys will sit down and then understand the, the requirements of mm -hmm. the client and then continue to offer the solution. Mm -hmm. Then we have the ICT department okay. uh, that uh, offer software solutions. So here they will develop web applications as well as uh, uh, like um, apps mm -hmm. whereby they can be able to... Um, right now we are having two apps mm -hmm. on, um, on the... Uh, App Store yeah. and the Google Play. Mm -hmm. So one of them is the Explore Radio app mm -hmm. uh, that uh, targets tourists who want to know more about the site that they are visiting. You can be able to find audio there describing such sites. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a good thing. It's a good way of connecting with the tourists because a local voice is mm -hmm. describing that kind of uh, monument or that kind of site. The second one that we have is the Namibian Constitution app, mm -hmm. where you can basically just uh, find uh, everything that you need to know about the Namibian Constitution. Mm -hmm. And it has uh, also features like your voice. So okay. that, that could be helpful to somebody who is maybe visually in debt, can be able to listen to a certain article. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me go back to your teachers, because you just spoke now about your teachers. Um, how many teachers do you probably have in Minds in Action? So currently Minds in Action employs uh, 21 uh, permanent employ uh, employees. Okay. And then um, about 18 of them are engineers who are also coaches in the STEAM thing. Mm -hmm. So they, they, when they are not teaching, 
they are developing apps oh. or they are developing engineering solutions. Okay. All right. Uh, let me go back to the learners again, because you said some learners have never come into contact with a computer mm. and now you have to give them classes. Do you have computers at your workplace in Minds and Action? Do you have computers for the learners that they can work on? Actually, we have everything that the learners need. All the learner need to do is sign up. Uh -huh. So, uh, and then we, we are saying we are using a hands-on approach. Mm -hmm. So it's learning by doing. Mm -hmm. So we provide them with the learning kits, the learning tools, the hardware, that is your, your, your robotics, uh, uh, motors, sensors, or all the components that they need to be able to come up with a fully functional robot. Mm -hmm. They will get all the oh. parts. And then they will get a, a, a laptop uh, that we can be able to use or when they are writing their computer program or code. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when it comes to other modules like 3D printing, we also provide them with the 3D printers on which they are working on. Okay. They say that to be a successful, you know, leader, you must uh, replicate yourself in other people. So do you maybe have in your team former learners that were part of the classes? Or maybe can you tell me of some, a former learner that you know that is doing great out there with the skills that they've acquired here? Okay, so we do have uh, learners that, uh, for example, we started with them uh, at primary school level. They went on to participate in national science fair competitions. They uh, went on to participate in independent robotics competitions, okay. like the uh, World Robotics Competition. So they, we were mentoring a team in Swakop Moon mm -hmm. you know, that uh, took part in a, in a, a robotics competition called Get Excited About mm -hmm. Robotics Competition. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, um, so that uh, competition, some of our learners were able to do very, very well and mm -hmm. go into the final stages. Okay. Then we also have uh, learners Mm -hmm. who come up with, uh, who can be able to identify a problem from their community. Hey. Yes. So mm -hmm. there's uh, a, a learner who um, identified a problem of fire. They okay. say in, in Swakop Moon, there's a lot of oh, yeah, that are burning down mm -hmm. because of fires. So she came up with a, um, a solution of installing sensors mm -hmm. uh, in, in those uh, informal settlements that when a, a fire or smoke is detected, uh, over a certain threshold. Hmm? You don't want to detect any fire even when you are. Yeah. Home, but it has to be over a, a uh, certain uh, mm -hmm. threshold. And then when it does that, it sends a message to the fire brigade. Oh. So that's now smart. yeah. So now it makes the, the response much faster. Wow. Yes. And then you will find um, one student, this one was a, a disabled student mm -hmm. who um, came up with a, 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 that's a smart blind stick. Okay. So the attack is like a, a, a blind guide, like a, oh. that's blind guide. Mm -hmm. So they attach a sensor there so that they can be able to avoid obstacles. Like, for example, when you're walking around mm -hmm. and you see, okay, there is an obstacle, then you can make a, a T sound to mm -hmm. just alert you that don't bump into that obstacle. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in, um, interestingly, she added a, a camera uh, on the kit there. Okay. That uses image processing. Mm -hmm. So this image processing can be able to recognize images. You, you feed it with different images. So it's like artificial intelligence now. You feed it with a, a lot of data of mm -hmm. different images. Mm -hmm. And then you can be able to recognize now that this is a chair, that is uh, a table, or that is a camera. Mm -hmm. So uh, once you point to it, it will say it aloud mm -hmm. uh, through, uh, yeah, through a voice. So uh, look at it as assisting someone who cannot see, mm. but you have a, a camera with image processing that can be able to ad help you identify objects. Okay. So one of the students came up with that project. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's interesting how there are so many ideas is, in, in learners' uh, heads that they can be able to develop these prototypes mm. and then attract investments. Uh, that uh, people who are willing to give them money to build yeah. those products further. Mm -hmm. And th that is uh, the model that we are having here at uh, Minds in Action to say that when our students come up with this project, we help them build the prototype and then be able to prove yeah. uh, their, uh, 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 that this uh, solution, this prototype they came up with can actually solve the problem that they have identified. Yeah. This stick is very interesting. Um, is it available or was it just a prototype? But 
there are no funds to duplicate it because I'm sure someone is watching and saying, I could use that for my daughter, for my son, my husband. Where can I get that okay. blind So this is a, an intellectual property of mm. the student okay. and they have built a prototype mm. and then it is available. The, okay. You can be able to make an arrangement with such a student. And then, you can be and then it can be made for you. Y yes. Okay. Yeah, because that is their goal. Mm -hmm. they exactly. They want to see that people are interested in their solution. Which is our troll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And behind the scenes, we spoke about you being part of the, you know, you said you were a fellow of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. I'm not sure if... Yeah, the Mandela Washington. The, the, that yeah. one. Can you please tell us about that one? Okay, so that, uh, the Man uh, I was the Mandela Washington fellow for mm. 2018. Mm. So this is just a, a program. It's a, a leadership program where they we had to apply to be able to be considered for that uh, um, fellowship. So I was able to be uh, selected and I was placed uh, at uh, Northwestern University mm -hmm. in, in Chicago, mm -hmm. where I spent uh, over eight weeks okay. uh, you are going through a, a rapid um, leadership training. Mm -hmm. So it was a positive experience from my side because I was able to um, build my network and yeah. uh, expand my knowledge in terms of uh, building a business uh, because in 2018 is the year we started. Yeah. So I really didn't, uh, my my experience for business was yeah. really at the grassroots. Yeah. So I do believe it helped me uh, to be resilient and uh, be able to keep on, keep on going because I know when you start a business, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of challenges yeah, that you have to face. Mm -hmm. And then we did face a lot, uh, of course. And um, so the fellowship um, also uh, connected me to a lot of uh, other Africans that uh, we collaborated on certain projects mm. uh, from different countries like uh, Malawi, uh, some in Ghana, Nigeria. So I, I could say now that I have such a network. Yeah. I can, because I spend so much time with those guys mm. in one house, I got so used to them that mm. I could actually call them and say, oh, how are you doing? I need to come to Nigeria, maybe. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. like Because mm -hmm. yeah. at, at the beginning, you were two. Yeah. I mean, you, did you go alone or did you go with Andreas? Okay, so when I had to apply, uh, I was considered alone. Okay. So, but it was a good thing because Andreas had to remain then and oh, yeah. carry on with it. That team, is true. Which he did a very good job. Mm -hmm. So when I when I came back, mm -hmm. uh, the business was uh, it's mm -hmm. like a crawling baby when oh. you just left it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And tell me, what do you like most about Mind in Action? Okay, I just like it that it gives us the freedom of uh, creativity. It gives us the freedom of um, free spiritedness that yeah. we can actually be able to to fail without really, really mm -hmm. having uh, and beating yourself uh, beating up and yourself yeah. Up. Because we know at the back of our minds that uh, failure is part of the whole yeah, experience. The, yeah. And then I also like very much the team mm -hmm. that we are working with. Okay. It's a group of enthusiastic youth mm -hmm. that uh, are really uh, focused on the goal that mm -hmm. we have set in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's uh, very uh, rare to find um, a, a, a very um, useful team or yeah, like competitive team. Mm -hmm. But then our team is is a it's a it's a good team that if you join our team and. Mm -hmm. This member maybe joins this team and they don't fit in or they are not uh, they they are not really compatible. Mm -hmm. They automatically falls out. Oh. And this is what yes. I observe. But those ones who remain, they push on, they soldier on. Yes. Even in our most in our lowest yeah. moments, then we are able to uh, to stand up. Okay. Yes. Uh, apart from being an educator, of course, you're an entrepreneur. Yes. So I just want you to talk to someone who is aspiring yes. to be an entrepreneur, yeah. but they're just so afraid of starting. Yes. How would you advise someone in that case? Okay. Uh, my first uh, advice is just to say, you've got to find something that you really love. And also that thing that um, you are most skilled in. And then once you find what you are skilled in and you love it, mm -hmm. Just follow that path in a way that you should accumulate all the knowledge about such a field that you should be the person to go to when it comes to that 
to that field. Mm -hmm. You should be one of the people to go. And for you to do that, you have to develop yourself. Mm -hmm. time. time is very important in that, in that aspect. So don't beat yourself up if it doesn't come right yeah. first. It's, it's like um, reading an interesting book. Uh, at first, you, you're like, oh, excited. Mm -hmm. And then in the middle, somewhere, oh. just <laughs> like, yeah. But then if you push through to the, to the end and see how the story ends, mm -hmm. and then it will be a yeah. book worth re uh, reading. It's and it's the same when you are taking an entrepreneurship journey. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a, a book as well. Mm -hmm. it's your, but then the one you are writing every day. Mm -hmm. So those obstacles or challenges that you are going through, actually the, the plots and the twists in the, mm -hmm. uh, in the journey, mm -hmm. or that is making the, uh, the, the story more interesting. Yeah, yes. yes, and um, maybe the second thing you should be inspired by money. I'm, I, I, of as course, just, I'm <laughs> inspired by purpose. I also love money a lot, mm -hmm. and I do want to be rich and opulent. And uh, I also want to meet those ones who are around me to be able yeah. to to be wealthy. And even those children that we are teaching, we want to to encourage them to be entrepreneurs so that they can be able to employ their their cousins mm -hmm. and family their countrymen and um, of course uh, the, the last thing that you should be uh, looking at when you want to take on entrepreneurship gen is fun yeah. you should be able to enjoy Joy. what you are doing and uh, for us we enjoy it a lot mm. and we, we wake up every day uh, to go do what we like and we, we feel a, a sense of uh, completeness mm. yeah. now they say that you'll never work a day in your life if you are doing something that you're passionate about. So what is the vision for Minds in Action? Okay, so the vision is driven by a mission of, um, so our mission is to make STEM education mm. accessible, right? Mm. And what you would like to see at the end of the day is a generation of African youth with the ability to identify problems in their communities and be able to offer innovative mm -hmm. solutions to those problems. So that we can be able to be an independent continent. We can be able it's to true. not only import, but we should be able to export to as well. our mm -hmm. resources and mm -hmm. export them in a finished form. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So where can we find you, your contact details um, for anyone who's interested in Mind in Action? Okay, so mindinaction.com.na, mm -hmm. that is our website. And then uh, for me, my email address is naudika mm -hmm. at mindinaction.com.na. Um, so those details you can also find on the website. Yeah. Uh, but also, if you just type in the Google mm. and I would become something might come up that do lead you to my contact. Don't mind Okay. Yeah. Quick, before I let you go, how do you actually market your business? Okay, so we market this business a lot through social media. We also have uh, in, on several occasions newspaper insets mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, and mostly also word of mouth because mm -hmm. a lot of uh, learners that we have are mostly referred to us by children who had already been participated or are uh, being part of the yeah, selection team. So, yes, uh, and then, oh, of course, I think there is a lot that needs to be done in the marketing department at Mind Selection because we feel we are not... Uh, well marketed as mm -hmm. we should be mm -hmm. uh, but those are opportunities that we are really looking uh, for okay. yeah. all right then thank you so much for the time that you gave us thank you so much that you gave us the honor to be able to be part of minds in action even now our minds are in action by this just doing this <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, we are so happy to have you here at minds in action mm -hmm. and you are always welcome to visit us and everybody who wants to just come mm -hmm. at Minds in Action and see what we do, mm -hmm. we can be able to give you a free demo. You okay. can explore with some of the robotic models that mm -hmm. we have. Try to write code that uh, does something uh, oh. that you can be happy about. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Right. So like what Daudika said, if you want to see your Minds in Action, you can come to them and they will give you a demo of how all these robotics things work. Yeah, I'm not in that field, so I won't know the terms. But anyways, thank you so, so much for watching. Thank you so, so much to Daudika and Mind in Action for giving us the platform. Remember to follow us on social media. That's at Hanok TV on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Follow me as well as the media crew. And of course, follow them. They are on Instagram, Minds in Action. That's all we had for you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be seeing you next time from Message. Goodbye. <laughs>